Hello, my friends. Okay, I'm about to go take a little drive. I need to go to a couple places here, make a few runs today. I just want to make this a little rambling video here. I haven't rambled in a while, so I knew you guys. I knew you guys missed my rambling. So I'm gonna today make a video talking about um, setting goals when uh, learning multiple languages. Uh, let's see. I had a very interesting conversation the other day with a buddy, <clears throat> and he he basically we basically talked about how um, he said he found it very difficult to because uh, he's he's learning multiple languages as well. Uh, I think he's doing Spanish. What he's doing Spanish, Korean, Thai, um, Chinese. Well, he already speaks Chinese well uh, and some other languages. And he basically was just saying how he. Um, he said it was he kind of hit a wall with Korean. Um, he, he's been studying for a while. He learned a lot, but he just was he just couldn't get further in it because um, he didn't have that many friends. <laughs> he said um, he started learning Thai. Okay, which way am I going? He said he started learning Thai and uh, he learned a lot in a short period of time. His girlfriend is Thai. And he hang he hangs around with a lot of Thai people, so he made a lot of progress. I mean, it only makes sense. So I look at it like this. You know, I I said this before. When you learn these languages, when you learn multiple languages, um, you got to set goals. Like for myself, I'm doing all these languages. I have to set goals for myself. I had to say, you know what, I'm gonna study up to this point. Once I get to this level, that that's it for me. That's it. I'm not trying to go to a higher level, right? At least for now. I mean, it's only it only makes sense uh, doing all those languages. I mean, if you're not totally immersed in the culture, you're not going to make you're not going to get to like a native level. It's, it, you're not. It's not going to happen. So I figure if I can get myself to at least an upper intermediate, low advanced intermediate around that area. I'm content because by that time I'm able to speak the language. I'm able to have basic conversations. I can talk about daily things with friends and whatnot. I'm, I'm not going to be able to talk about literature and, and religion and stuff and, and politics, but um, I'll be able to talk about that basic stuff, like you know, just just normal life life stuff, you know, to survive. So um, that's the level I want to get to. Now, if later on things change, I go to the country. You know, let's say I got a plan to go to Tibet or somewhere or or Thailand, and I'm going to take my language level to I'm going to take it to another level. I'm going to I'm going to do whatever I do, whatever it takes to go to like a native level. It only makes sense. Why? Because I'm going to be in the I'm going to be immersed in the culture. I'm going to be in, around that language every day. So at this point, you know, uh, I, I'm not. I'm not in that situation, so I gotta do what I got. I gotta do what I gotta do now, as far as you know, setting these goals. So once I get to that level, that's it. I'm not gonna um, continue working on the language to get to a higher level. I'm gonna stay on that level until things change. So that's why you know there's been some people that ask me, well, why don't you want to take you go to a native level in the languages? Well, you know, this is why because I got too many languages going on, and you know, why not explore? If I'm in my own country, you know, I'm learn. If I'm in my own country and I'm not able to use all these languages, I'm not being able to hear them every day. Why not explore? Why not spend a few months, three to six months, whatever, on a language, depending on what language it is, get to a pretty good level and then move on? Why not? You know, I'm not going to spend like ten years on one language and then spend another ten on, on another language when I'm not in the country. That's, it doesn't make any sense to me. But if, if I was just studying something like Chinese, if that was the only language, then yeah, that's understandable. I would just, I, 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 will, I will study that language longer. It only makes sense, right? So yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's my view on that. I, I, I feel that if you study multiple languages in your own country, not going to these other countries, not having a chance, then you know, just get them to a certain level and move on. It's that easy. Now, if you spend the right time and you know get the right practice in with one of those languages, I mean, you won't possibly. I mean, you will. 
you 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 won't really forget the language as long as you keep practicing it. If you keep practicing it, you'll be okay. So, what do you guys think about that? Is that a good plan? And that's my plan. That's what I'm going to continue to do until until my situation changes. Until I get that opportunity to go over to the to the country and hear the language every day. But until then, I'm going to, I'm going to have my language for the year. I'm going to choose what. I'm gonna choose like three or four languages per year, focus on those. And when the next year comes, just move on. That's it. So that's my strategy. So yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about. Uh, what do you guys, I don't know what you guys think about that. Um, like I said, if you guys only study in one language, that's different. But if you study in like 10 plus languages, you have to take this type of approach. It only makes sense. So, all right, that's enough of rambling. Um, let me know what you guys think about that, and um, I look forward to you guys' comments. Thank you.